and there to pray together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, praying together with the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. You know, the Holy Spirit can come upon you to groan through you. At the same time, the Holy Spirit also shares his burden with you. Say, pray for this matter now. And together with the Holy Spirit, we are praying together. Number five, <clears throat> praying together with the believers. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. When she was told to go and represent for the Jewish people before the king, she told her uncle Mordecai, I will fuss together with my handmaid and you ask all the Israelite Jewish people to fast together with me. So when Esther fasted, no, we always only focus on Esther fasting for three days and three nights. <coughs> we have forgotten that Esther's mates fasted together with her. She was not alone. Her mates fasted together with her. They uphold her in fasting for three days and three nights. So praying together, not with all the believers, but choice believers. Not everybody knows how to pray, you know. When we fasted for 40 days, our corporate fast that I told you earlier, I did not invite all my staffs. I handpicked among 120, I handpicked 40 who can really know how to pray. And that's whom we gathered in our TV studio for 40 days to pray. My other staffs felt that I was showing favoritism. I said, I'm not showing favoritism. And I don't care if you think like that. Because I'm the boss. <laughs> but I told them, look, this is nothing favoritism or any of that sort. None of you guys should have those thinking in your mind. We need serious praying. And I handpick people who knows how to pray. So praying together with the believers. Number seven. Or number six. Pe praying people who will be moved with compassion to intercede. When you hear of an impending judgment, you don't clap your hands and say, Hooray! Hallelujah! Yes, Lord! No. <clears throat> You'll be moved with compassion to intercede to even overthrow or overturn the judgment of God. A good example is the prophet Moses. In Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 to 14, verses 31 to 33, and Numbers chapter 16, verse 20 to 22. In all those three occasions, God wanted to destroy the entire Jewish people who came out of Egypt. And each occasion, Moses knelt down, held on to the hands of God, and interceded even to putting his life on the stake. He told the Lord, if you still want to kill them, then strike my name from the book of life. Now, which one of us would do that? It takes great compassion, great love. Now, why Moses was so dear is because he put his life on the stake. For which people? For not for a good person, you know. For the bunch of people who were stiff neck. Even God calls them stiff neck. Even God got tired of them. The God of long suffering became tired of them. <laughs> That's what the Bible says, right? He got tired of them. You try to imagine, you know. For the God of long suffering to be so sick and tight of these people, how much more stiff their neck must be. Too stiff. Too stiff. But Moses got in between them and God. He stood in the middle. He said, Lord, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. You cannot kill them. And he would remind God of the Abrahamic covenant. He reminded God of the Jacob covenant. 
he reminded God of Isaac's covenant. Say, how can you do it, Lord? And it eventually cost Moses his own life for those people. But yet, he stood in the gap. That is the sixth kind of intercessory ministry, where you move with compassion. Just like the Apostle Paul said, the love of Christ constrains me. It goes beyond anything else. Transcends even time and space. Now the seventh kind. Waiting before the Father God to receive prayer instruction. A good example is Abraham. Genesis chapter 18, verses 17 to 33. God came and told Abraham that he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now what did Abraham do? He came and interceded. See, you hear from the Father God and then you intercede. So these are the seven kinds of intercessory ministry. Number five or number six. The sixth kind of ministry. Seven? Hey, either you are translated or I am... Maybe you are getting tired, so you are jumping the numbers. Don't worry, I'll rush through, okay? <clears throat> I'm actually rushing through, you know. But I will eventually write a book on this. And then I will expand everything in very simpler detail so that we can understand this subject better. The number six, sixth kind of ministry, people waiting on God. Knowing God's plans, participating in heavenly councils, and revealing God's plans and wills. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer concerning my complaint. Every morning, early in the morning, the prophet Habakkuk goes right up to the tower and he stands there. Early in the morning, two or three o'clock in the morning, and he looks up to heaven, waiting for God to hear what God will speak to him. That's what it is. And when you wait on God, you will participate in one of three gatherings. Number one, the gathering of God. God's, I call it God's gathering. Job chapter 1 verse 6. <coughs> chapter 2 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 8. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 9. First Kings chapter 22 verses 19 to 23. This is a gathering where people, saints in heaven, and even some saints in heaven, in, on earth, they will be caught up to heaven and they will participate in this gathering before God, where proclamations are made, where the will of God are made. You know, last year, I was caught up to such a gathering. And a very important announcement on Rosh Hashanah day last year. I was fasting and praying in Jerusalem. Where I was caught up and the Lord was making a very important assignment. An announcement. And I witnessed that. So that is the first kind. You participate in the gathering of God. Now the second kind. Called the prophet's council. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 18. There are many councils in heaven. Among the many, there's one called the prophet's council. And some of the choice prophets of God in the Bible are in the council. And I have been privileged, privileged by the many, many grace of God to participate in that council as a member of the council to hear decisions they make. 
and they discuss about issues of nations. The first time <coughs> that I ever went to that council was in the year 2008, just before the US general elections. And I was, that was the first time that Mr. Obama was standing for election. And I went to this council and Abraham is the chairman of this council. And he asked me to come closer to him. So I stood closer and he had a file in his hand. And on the file was written the word USA. And he looked at the file and he said, Obama will be elected president. I said, sir, it cannot be. You know, that was the year that uh, Pauline was also, Pauline, another guy, what was his name? McCain? John McCain. They were standing for election. I, you know, all Christians were voting for that group. So I pleaded on behalf. I said, Lord, I mean, sir, we don't want this Obama. We want this group. I pleaded, you know. And Father Abraham looked at me and said, no, it has been decided. It has been decided that Obama will be voted to office. So, and then, um, then I was told, now go and tell the people. This was one week before the election. Then when the second term came, the same thing happened. I was again caught up to the council and I heard them discussing. This is what we have decided. Now, we, you are in the midst of another election. But you know, in the, in the, I must tell you something very honestly. In the past, I was quite concerned about the US general elections. But this year, I just couldn't be bothered. I just didn't know why. I just wasn't interested at all. And I didn't want to bother to even find out, Lord, what do you think? Who will be standing in the office? I didn't bother. It was totally out of my mind, you know? But on the first night, when uh, Brother Neville Johnson was preaching, and while he was preaching, I was just looking at him preaching, and suddenly, I was caught up in the spirit, and I found my soul standing before the council, the very council where I always used to go. And I saw Father Abraham, and I was standing beside him, and I was very, very surprised to see Donald Trump come and stand in that, in that room. And this is what I was told. They said, Trump will become president. Wait, 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 wait. Listen to the whole thing before you clap your hands. He will be used to clean and purify the nation. As hard as he is, he has been prepared for this. As Cyrus was used to discipline Israel, and then to restore Israel, likewise, Trump will be used in the US. He will be used to curb violence. He will be God's mouth and hand for this nation. So, This was a word that, this was a vision that I saw on that 10th of August at 8.23 p.m. And since I was told not to share, I just kept it to myself. And I wasn't planning to share this at all. But while we were seated there, I showed this to Brother Neville. I said, does this bear witness to you? I read to him, he said, 100% I agree with this. So because we had an agreement, now I'm sharing with you what I saw in the council. You see, this is what the one of the privileges when you walk with God, you'll be caught up in the council to hear decisions that are made in heaven and then to know the seasons and the times in which we are living. 
and how to conduct ourselves even sometimes to forewarn what is going to come to pass the third kind of gathering is the communion of the saints now this i'm sure you are already very familiar with you have heard this over and over again hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 Zechariah chapter 3 verses 7 and 8 and a good example that I shared with you the other day is John John's example in Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 when an angel was not an angel but a saint a prophet in heaven Revelation chapter 22 verses 7 to 9 and you will also read the experience of the prophet Daniel in Daniel chapter 8 verse 13 to 19 where he also participated in the communion of the saints in his time. Finally, number seven. Are you glad? <laughs> oh, you're clapping your hands. <laughs> so you have been putting up with me all this while. And I thought you were hungry for all this. Oh my. I have been deceived. No? Okay, number seven. People who will demonstrate the power of God before the world for the world to tremble and to have a fear for God. And you will be poured the anointings like what brother Neville shared the powers of the age to come and what are the powers of the age to come revelation chapter 5 verse 6 talks about the seven horns on the lamb's head the seven horns represents seven anointings of power two years ago during the feast of pentecost i had a visitation from the prophet moses and he talked to me about the seven horns, what the seven horns represented. And this is the book that I wrote, The Last Day's Seven Horns Anointing. And the many things that Brother Neville shared last night about the powers of the age to come, I, I was very surprised to hear him share, which echoed very similarly in exact manner how I was shown about the seven horns anointing. And this seven horns anointing, the powers of the age to come, are unlike anything that has ever been revealed in heaven or on the earth. Nothing. Never. Even the angels in heaven have never seen such powers of God yet. They are going to be poured out upon you. <clears throat> now when these powers of God are poured out you will demonstrate the power of God for the world to tremble and the fear of God to come upon them I'll give you four examples Moses we read Exodus chapter 7 to 14 he demonstrated the power of God and brought the nation of Egypt to her knees. And Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 17, up to 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 17, he too brought an evil king Ahab and Jezebel down to her knees for the power that he demonstrated and his fierceness and boldness. And number three, the last day's youth company, if you read Joel chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, the last day's youth company will do awesome signs and wonders like never before ever heard anything in the history of the creation of this world. You know, Superman will be no match. Spider-Man will be no match. What other men do you have? Batman? Nah. Batman only bad mobile. Aquaman, Birdman, whatever man. 
None of them. Okay, all the justice leaked together. <laughs> hey, you know, all this justice leak is nothing but Marvel comics. They don't exist in real life. But when the seven horns anointing is poured out upon the youths, they will do great exploits that heaven is waiting to see. Heaven is waiting to see. Heaven is waiting with great excitement to see the awesome works of the Holy Spirit that has been kept hidden for such a time as this. Never before revealed for such a time as this. How blessed and privileged you are to receive that anointing. Your little children will receive that. The youths will receive that. The women will receive that. The senior citizens will receive that. And the ministers of God will receive that. Amen! Every true remnant of God will receive that. Secondly, you, or fourthly, you will also read of the two witnesses who come for the last final time. In Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 to 11, you will read that they too, for the ministry period of three and a half years, do awesome signs and wonders, quite similar to the ministry of Moses and Elijah. Whether they will be Moses and Elijah come back again in the flesh, we don't know. But it can also be someone existing on this earth who will have that anointing, the spirit and the power of Moses and Elijah come upon them, just like how it rested upon John the Baptist. Remember what the Lord Jesus said? This is he who is Elijah to come. But it was John the Baptist, right? In the flesh, it was John the Baptist. So, the spirit of Elijah entering into John the Baptist, I accidentally reveal a secret. I'm sorry. Shall I continue? You know, now you have to believe this just by faith. I have no theology to exp exp explain all this. You want me to continue? Yes. Now, John the Baptist is John the Baptist, right? Yes. He's real flesh and blood, John the Baptist. But when the Lord Jesus said, he said remember what he said in Matthew chapter 11. He said, if you can receive this, why must he say, if you can receive this? Which means, most people cannot receive this. Now, re let me emphasize one more time. You must remember this statement. It came from none other than the Lord Jesus himself. He said, if you can receive this, if you can believe this, this is Elijah. How does that work? See, they enter into your bodies and they fulfill their ministry. We talked about the other day that they without us are not complete. So how are they going to do their ministry? How are they going to do ministry? Enter inside you, working together with you. You know, the critics will say this is all new agey. So let them say new agey. It doesn't matter. There will forever be clowns, Pharisees and Sadducees clowns, who will always say all that. Let them say all that. By the look of your eyes, it tells me. 
you are not sure no see that's why i said earlier if you can believe if you can receive this is elijah to come you know why i am sharing this with you when you experience this you will know that something strange is not taking place do you mind i share some of your experience brother do you do you mind yes or no okay you know <laughs> you know the first time i experienced that i was standing and preaching and suddenly i felt shaken and uh, i was wondering what it was i f- i knew something like came inside me and it visibly moved me and i didn't understand what it was until i shared that with brother nevel and i asked him you know this happened to me and he said it has also happened to him so and the experiences are quite similar and it is during that time the saints enter into us to fulfill the ministry you know there have been people who have testified that while i am speaking they have seen my face change into another and they've seen moses standing there they've seen my face change into the face of a lion now how does all this happen now this is the first time in my entire life i am sharing this publicly and then again it was an accident it was not planned it just he just <laughs> slipped out of my mouth <laughs> I would have never ever shed this over my dead body. You know, it just accident. I'm sorry. It is an accident. You just forget about this whole thing. <laughs> this is another thing. How the last days ministries will be fulfilled. Now, this is similar to how you read in the scriptures. and the spirit of the lord came upon them now everything else is all the work of the holy spirit nothing takes place outside the holy spirit it is the holy spirit who determines everything you know whenever you read in the scriptures the spirit of the lord came upon them that's how we are shown but what actually happens we don't know until now that i am sharing with you many times this is how it happens and the first time when this happened to me i found myself speaking preaching things that i have never known before and i was scared i was literally scared you know i was thinking is this all real they were just coming out of my mouth you know it's like someone else took hold of me and they were speaking although i still had the possession of my mind my me was still me but at the same time i was speaking things that i have never planned before it bypassed my thought process that i am not processing my thinking while speaking it was just flowing forth like a prophecy was flowing forth and i was really scared the first time I remember sharing with Neville. He said, "I'm really scared, you know," and he said that was his experience the first time. And then we shared, okay, how to steady ourselves. See, you need to learn how to cooperate with with this anointing, so that when it happens a second time, third time, you can just relax, relax, and let God have the full work to be done. Amen. Amen. So. this brings to the end aren't you glad so these are the seven kinds of last days kingdom based ministries that god is going to raise up and all of you are blessed and privileged to be part of this last days great ministries that god is going to raise up one prerequisite that is of supreme importance is 
you should totally die to self your self cannot live any longer all those self centered ministries that you see today you you cannot carry that baggage with you into the new the new wine skin the new wine must be poured into new wine skin meaning your old life must die if you don't die you cannot receive this new wine this is number 1 number 2 you must have great humility because you cannot touch the glory of god you know among the many ministers of god i i'll share this one story to you this is very important can i have 5 minutes among the many ministers of god that god has raised and i was very blessed to read the saddest one that i've ever read concerns a minister of god from england called stephen jeffries he was mightily used by god in uh, crippled cases he was like an expert a specialist for crippled cases you know and no cripple can ever be unhealed in his meetings so at the height of his popularity of his ministry crowds in great numbers gathers in his meetings he once went to south africa and he saw a sea of crowd before him and when he was introduced to speak <coughs> he came up to the stage he looked at the crowd and he said the world is now under my feet and the hand of god came upon him and he was struck by the judgment of god with the same disease for which he prayed for others to be set free he became a cripple he was banned his body was banned his legs were all twisted and curled up till the day he died that was how he was when he was buried his coffin was the size of a piano because they couldn't stre- st- stretch him It was all bent and lester samrel you know lester samrel lester samrel visited him and he cried and repented and he told lester samrel god has disciplined me because of my pride he repented but the discipline was there till he died why because he touched the glory of god it doesn't belong to you all these powers of the age to come they are gods they are not yours you are just a servant remember that you are a handmaiden you are a servant you are not the possessor you must have great humility number 2 number 3 you must always glorify god in all the things god will do always be careful to give all the glory to god and never ever even entertain for a fleeting second that you did this Amen. never never Number 4 Totally die to self This is what is required for this last days generation to flow in this awesome glory that God is going to manifest in this last days Remember what I shared with you the first night the mistakes that the generation in the past have done you cannot afford to do so they all are there as a lesson for us an example for us our predecessors you look at them you learn your lesson and then you don't repeat them in your own life have you heard of robert slyden he has written a very good book called god's generals where god told him to do a research about the many men and women of god 
their success and their failures. What made them rise up, what made them fall. Read that book and then learn from their mistakes so that you don't duplicate them in your own life. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up for a word of prayer. Holy Father, we bow our heads before your presence right now. And we thank you I see the will of Ezekiel in our midst right now. It has witnessed every word that was spoken here today. And the Bible tells us the will has eyes all over the rims. And it has also <coughs> seen every one of you who are gathered here. When he saw you, he did not see your external face, but saw the hearts. And the things that God has put in your heart... How many of you, even those who are watching this program afar off, who really received in unadulterated manner, with simplicity of heart and mind, these things? And those who had some apprehensions about all these things? He who humbles himself like a little child, the Lord Jesus said, only he will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Be a participator in the things of heaven. Be a demonstrator of the power and glory of the kingdom of heaven. I hear a voice coming from the wheels now. Prepare. Prepare these people to meet with the glory of God. Prepare to hear the voice of the trumpet of God. Prepare to receive, to see the cloud of glory coming down in your midst. Prepare your children for the glory of God is coming upon them. Prepare your youths for their hands need to be taught to war. For their feet need to be taught to be adorned with shoes, not just to preach the good news, but to fly in the heavenlies. Prepare the daughters of men for the glory of God that is going to come upon them. The daughters of Miriam arise. The daughters of Deborah arise. The daughters of Anna arise. Take up the timbrel in your hands. Take up the sword in your hand. Take up the censer in your hands. And be waiting before your God. Before the ark. To receive the glory. Prepare the foundations of the churches. Realign them 
according to the foundation that heaven has set set your hearts and your motives pure and right before the lord your god for no hand that has been defiled can lift up a censer before the living god for such a hand that offers that censer will be considered like nadab and abihu who offered strange fire before god do not have double standards for such people would be considered like ananaya and sapira have a clean heart a clean mind clean hands before the lord your god i see many chariots golden chariots station one by one like how cars are parked in the parking lot they all are parked one by one outside in the parking lot they are yours can we all kneel down before you get up from your knees before we close this conference i perceive the holy spirit wanting us to purify our hearts to cleanse our hearts can you do that right now you look into your hearts if there be any still shortcoming any offense any unforgiveness get rid of them right now you should not leave this church with your hearts uncleaned besides the chariots of god i see kirubim and the living creatures all standing outside and they will accompany you but they are holy creatures they can only work with people who have cleansed themselves like how isaiah sanctified himself so take a little moment now to sanctify your hearts to sanctify your minds and consecrate yourselves holy father i thank you lord jesus you are standing in our midst high and mighty and you are beholding your sons and daughters who have humbled themselves and made them low before you to acknowledge your goodness over them to acknowledge your gentleness over them and to also acknowledge your greatness your all mightiness and to declare that we are nothing before you lord we humble ourselves before you and we thank you that you have forgiven us of all our shortcomings we thank you that even as your dear sons and daughters were praying that you have sent forth your seraphim to sanctify their lips sanctify their eyes sanctify their ears sanctify every inner 
members of them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet sanctified made clean and made pure forgive them lord for the works of their hands for some of them are blood smeared i pray let your precious blood wash that thoroughly from every guiltiness sanctify their lips lord with the coals from your throne forgive for speaking lies forgive for speaking hypocrisy forgive for murmuring gossiping backbiting and slander forgive lord sanctify our lips now and sanctify the eyes sanctified from all defilement of the lusts of the flesh and the lusts of the eyes sanctify forgive us lord for allowing dark black rays of light of the world to enter through our eyes to defile our souls for those electromagnetic waves have defiled the soul now i pray sanctify lord sanctify their eyes and let the souls be sanctified wash clean purified now i pray for all the ministers in our miss lord i pray lord lay your blessing hands in a special manner upon them they have labored for you thus far lord lay upon them double honor double grace double gifting slot for all the sufferings they had gone through for all the humiliations they have gone through for all the wilderness they have walked through for all the dungeons they have been in through now i pray let this day be a day of redemption for them a day of coming out a day where their feet will be set in a large place and their heads be anointed with fresh oil we thank you for doing that lord you are a good god shall we all lift up our holy hands unto god and bless the name of the good god He is our good God. His grace and mercies endures for ever and ever. Come on, open your mouth and bless the name.